and Dave Watson and myself, we went to Tidal Impact. They're, they put this together. It was very <laughs> thrown together, short and sweet, but it was 35 minutes of a service for another church, and they had the floor the whole time, and they did a super job. Like, that was one of our, our uh, first things that we did. Um, so on our way up to Tidal Impact, we're thinking, okay, we're getting in the bus, and I know my group, um, um, next to none of them had ever been away from home. I had never been away from my kids for any more than a day, one night. And I was thinking, Lord, you've got to be with us because I am going to, I don't know how I will make it through this week. I, when I thought about going to Tidal Impact, I was so excited. And I thought, this is going to be an awesome time. This is an awesome opportunity for our teams to see the different things that they are capable of to maybe challenge themselves. And as I get closer, because I called Mark back a while ago, I'm like, can I go? It's the 16th and 22nd. Man, He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, go, have fun. As long as you have someone to take care of the kids. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I took care of it, not thinking the 16th to the 22nd was actually seven yeah. full days. So as I get closer, yeah, I'm, going, yeah. I'm marking it off on my calendar, and I'm thinking, Lord, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, when I left, I was a little, I was trying to be excited. I had my kids crying on my legs and hanging on to them, trying to get them in the truck. And Mark was trying to buckle them in, and they're still bawling. And I'm going, Lord, now would be a really good time. I got on the bus, and all you could see was anticipation. They were sort of excited, but more anticipation. They didn't know what to expect because I had never been to it before. I tried to show them videos and stuff, but if you've never experienced and you don't have any idea, how do you tell somebody what something's like if you've never experienced it yourself? I even said the week before, I'm like, I wish I wasn't going. I just want to stay home. <laughs> After going, when we get back, um, they said, would you go again? I would go again in a heartbeat. It was the best time I've had all summer so far. I'm sure the wedding will talk none of it, but it was an awesome week. Um, it was the best time I've ever had where I have not had my immediate family with me. I think it's the only vacation I've ever had where I've not had my family with me. Um, we got in the bus, we got to Fredericton, and we drove around and drove around and finally came to church. We were there about five minutes late, but I figured, why would we need to be early? We're never really for anything else. Let's just stay on course and be late. So we got in there, and I didn't drive. Dave drove. Um, we get in there, and there was over 1,500 teens and leaders there. Um, to see that many people, that many teens there to worship and do God's work, oh, it was awesome. But these teens, a lot of them didn't know what they were in for. They didn't know why they were able to be there. And I believe that God called each person that was able to go. I believe it was his will that they were there. They were there for a reason. Um, I didn't meet any teens that week that didn't get something out of that week. Um, it was just awesome. The teens, they were crazy worshiping. Some of them were like, because there was kids that had never been to church there. They happened to be part of a group that was going, and their group sponsored them to go, because a lot of them couldn't afford to go. Their parents, their inner city kids, their um, kids that maybe don't have the money to go, they just, you know, who knows the situation, but they were able to go. And one of the big things I learned this week, and it was the play at the end of the skit where just, where you can see God standing there, because Danielle and she was standing there, and the kids would come up and they'd do their little thing and they would conform God and he really spoke to me that we do try to conform God around what we want him to be and then all of a sudden you see Jen Cena come up and she looks at the hands and she sees okay this <coughs> is God, this is the one that has done so much for us and she conforms to what he wants her to be and I like the verse and it kept coming up it was funny because it came up multiple times through the week and then they used it, their sweatshirts at the camp with it on it but it was just Romans 12 too um, to not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I think sometimes we do need to have renewing because we start going through, and I know I was guilty of it before I went, and um, you get going through your daily life, and it's like, oh, and something slips out, and it's like, oh, well, whatever. Forgive me. I'll just keep on going. But how does that, through that week, I was watched nonstop because I was mom to all these kids. And Judy, I don't know how you do it with the laundry. Ooh, that was pleasant enough to make me feel at home. And every time I turned around Monday and Tuesday, they're like, Matthew's looking for you. Matthew's looking for you. Matthew's looking for you. He was in our cabin. He was in the dining hall. He was downstairs. And I'm like, what? I don't have any clean socks. <laughs> okay, excellent. So I did laundry for Matthew and forgot some. And oh, the smell he threw the garbage. <laughs> Thank goodness. But 
Uh, it's just, brand. when you're being watched, it's, it really, uh, it really puts things into perspective because you're being watched the whole time. So if I would have said, if I would have swear, started swearing that and said, like, what is this? What would another leaders have thought, first of all? What would he have thought, like, I'm here without my mother and now you're like, <laughs> not that I thought you would have cried, Matt, but I don't know. I was, I was um, no, it was, it was an awesome time. Um, but this was a verse that really spoke to me. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I think that's what I needed. And I think that that, that was an awesome opportunity for me to be able to go. And I thank you all for letting me go. Um, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, perfect will. Uh, I'm not sure who does. I'm going.
there was not as many of the teams that didn't go to title impact here last Sunday as there was, you know, this week. But not once did I have to say, can you be quiet? Please, will you just be quiet? They all sat over here. They sat up a row. And I'm like, I'm standing up here and I'm being voice off of And I looked and there was nobody back there. I went, where are they? They were over here. Um, it was just awesome. I don't know how long it will last. I don't care. Because at least they've had the opportunity to see what they're capable of. And they can see that they are leaders. They are awesome at what they do. Um, there was lots of opportunity during this week for everyone to use their gifts. All we needed to bring was our open hearts and minds. Um, <laughs> these are our teens. This little pair of shoes here, that's Jeffrey. <laughs> that was Jeffrey. No, that's Danielle. Are you sure? Yeah, but Danielle switched for that one. <laughs> See? He's capable of more than I thought. <laughs> but they they got to do puppets. They got to do, um, they just get to do so many things. The skits. Opportunity. <laughs> there were so many opportunities to use our talents and gifts through the week. All we needed was the open hearts, minds, and maybe muscles and sleep. They helped this camp we were at. Um, this camp closed for the week. They shut their doors. They accommodated over 100 teens plus their leaders. Um, we did some work around their camp. It was awesome. They still had to pay all their staff. Their staff had to pay to go to Tidal Impact, but they didn't get money for us being there, and they fed us almost every day, three meals a day. Um, it was an awesome camp. If I don't feel that if we wouldn't have been able to stay at that camp that our teams would have got anything, as much if not anything, out of this week because they were able to um, be with other teens. So there was a whole group of teens, inner city kids, not one Christian in the group, maybe one. She was a little loud. <laughs> her, and, her and Jessica hit it off right away. <laughs> they, were, they were good friends through the whole week, and I think that their friendship will last. Um, they... They were there all week, and these teens, all of our teens got together, and it was awesome because they got to talk to other people. We got to, they were visiting through the week. Um, our teens got to meet and learn more about each other because really our teens went to school together. They went to church together. They didn't know anything about each other. They really didn't know their likes and dislikes. They didn't know, I heard you say, I didn't know that was so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Or that Emily actually talked. Emily never started talking until this week. We've known her for two years, and she never said two words. I walked into church this morning, and I started walking over, and I thought, well, I'll have to make a conversation. Emily started 